Welcome back, everyone, to the VS Code Insiders podcast. You're behind the scenes with the VS Code team and your favorite code editor. I am one of your hosts, James Montemagno, PM on our developer community team. And with me today, I'm super excited. I have Logan Ramos, a senior software engineer on the VS Code team. How's it going, Logan? I'm good, James. How are you? I'm doing awesome. And I just learned that you actually have been at Microsoft at a while, but you've actually interned on multiple teams like in the editor space before, which I had no idea, which is so cool. Yeah, yeah, it's been a, a great time. I, th I think when I initially joined as an intern for Microsoft in 2018, I believe, I thought developer tooling was kind of lame. And, and like, I was like, this is not exciting. Like, I want to work on Xbox. But it's been amazing to see how passionate everyone is in the developer space. And every day that I get to work with people who are like myself, like I am the customer kind of of this product, and it makes it much easier to connect with them. That's awesome. Yeah. When we just had Tyler on, I think that was, he said the exact same thing, which is like, yeah, I am building the tool that I want to use with a team that wants to use, you know, the tools every single day to make the tool better, which is so cool. And no, I agree with you. I mean, I started my career making video games for the Xbox 360. And then I became a WinForms developer building desktop apps. And then I fell into loving dev tools in the space. I don't know, just something about it just clicked. I mean, I love the video game space, but, um, um, yeah, for some for some reason, uh, desktop applications were calling my name uh, and, and apparently yours as well, uh, which is awesome. Uh, well, I want to yes. bring you on because there's been a feature that a lot of people talk about inside of VS Code, which has a funky name. And I don't actually think describes maybe what the feature. I mean, it does describe like what the implementation of the feature is, but maybe not why you would want to use it. Like on the podcast, we want to talk about like not what the feature does, but like why? Why was this thing even put into the product? How is it evolving? How are we getting feedback? And this is something that people see as BYOK or bring your own key, which I, I guess you're bringing a key, but it's kind of in the model selection. Like what is bring your own key? Like how is it thought about? Like why is it in the product and why would someone even use this thing before we talk about how it's evolving in the latest versions? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I named it bring your own key when I first started implementing it. Ooh, and, sick you know, burn. I'm an engineer, I'm not a marketer. And maybe it should have been called bring your own model, but that's what we've been calling it since. Uh, its official name is language model chat providers. Uh, so there's actually a full VS Code API that we could talk about at some point. Uh, but the reason for this comes down to, you know, VS Code has always been about developer choice, our extension ecosystem, et cetera. And while GitHub Copilot, you know, gives you some amazing models to work with out of the box, the truth is, there's just it's impossible for us to support every model. Every model you add to GitHub Copilot bifurcates your GPU capacity, right? So if you have a thousand GPUs and you have two models, you know, then the maybe 500 model if you're doing 50-50 balancing. So every day, a brand new LLM comes out. I mean, I'm sure you see all the articles. And so some people are really passionate about wanting to be on the cutting edge and trying new things. And it's just not something we're able to provide uh, with the subscription. And so bring your own key or bring your own model allows you to add any model you want uh, to GitHub Copilot and speak to it through the chat interfaces, through the agent, treating it as if it came uh, right with the product. So it's a really cool feature. Now, these models from any pro any provider, like what what's in the box like here? Because like I, out of the box today, I go in, I select my models. I got, I have, you know, GPT-5, I got Claude, I got Gemini in there, like, um, is it also sort of like that today where there is just additional models or like do users configure it or like how, what's that setup process look like? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the bring your own key arc started with it was all done, you know, in the Copilot chat extension. But what we found is because there's so many different model providers, I mean, you have Anthropic, Google, uh, OpenAI, you know, DeepSeek, all these other ones that keep appearing, uh, it's just unsustainable for us to maintain them all. So we've put a few in out of the box at the moment uh, that provide pretty much a, a the most commonly used ones uh, based on you know popularity. And then the idea is that other extensions can go and implement theirs as well and contribute to the uh, growing ecosystem. So pretty much any OpenAI compatible model we support, and that happens to be kind of the spec that a lot of model providers have uh, decided on. Now, are these models like someone would want to use this because they're on the cutting edge, but also like, are they all cloud models? Like, like, like where do these things run? Like who's paying for them as well? Like, or if I have, I have four, I have five, I have 18 machines in front of me and 
76 Nintendo Switches. Can I just like run a model on my Nintendo Switch and then like plug that in? <laughs> yeah, there's there's two conflicting kind of opinions on what you bring your own key is good for. The first is model access and the, and the second is privacy. And mm. so there's an idea, especially in, you know, some of these more uh, regulated spaces like healthcare, et cetera, that maybe a local LM is what you want. And so being open AI compatible, we support uh, LM Studio, you know, Light LM, uh, Olama, and all these common uh, local LM providers. And I've been able to run, you know, the latest GPT OSS models that came out of OpenAI recently uh, straight on my MacBook. And oh, wow. they're actually pretty decent and, and and do a good job. I would say that, you know, the local models don't quite compete with the fact that these cloud models are using such massive amounts of GPU compute, uh, but it does have the the benefit of being privacy first and, and fully on your machine. That makes sense. Maybe I can run on my Series X and I get a little bit more boost <laughs> in the power there. Now, the one other question I had, too, is so I go into to, into VS Code and then how you see this is you, you select a model and there's manage models. Now, I actually love a feature that people don't know about. This has nothing to do with bring your own key, but it's in the bring your own key selector, which is managing the models that show up in the model selector with Copilot. You can manage and pick those. But when you're inside of there, yeah, you get this drop down today which is Azure Anthropic, XAI, Llama, OpenAI, Google, Grok with a Q, Open Router, uh, OpenAI compatible, and you can configure. So if I select Azure, I'm going to type in like my endpoint and my API key basically into that. So for example, if I wanted to use GPT-5 Nano, which I'm a big fan of, I could just spin up, I'm, I'm thinking practical instance, like I have my model, I have to spin up Nano, grab the URL, grab my key, boom. And then now all my requests are going to be routed through my Azure OpenAI endpoint. Did I articulate what you said correctly? Yes. Th yep, that's correct. Um, and yeah, you can either do it through Azure or there's OpenAI listed directly if you don't want to do the whole dance of setting up your own uh, compute, depending on your use cases. That makes a lot of sense. Now, on top of that, though, like how do then the system prompts work like in this mod in this model right because like the team fine tunes and they're all open source you can see the system prompts are they using the same system prompts like if i configure you know uh you know open ai or olama or an an uh, anthropic with these these keys in, in the in the in the bring your own key model like is it is it one-to-one -one kind of or is, is it going down a different path based on uh kind of the models that are there or how does that work yeah yeah, I mean, we try our best to make it one to one. We want Bring Your Own Key to feel like a first, you know, class experience. We're not looking to treat Copilot favorably one way or the other. It's all about whatever makes the developer the most efficient and enabling them to use AI uh, in their day to day jobs. So we do try to use uh, custom prompts, of course, for something, you know, that just came out that we don't have, like, you know, some of these new moonshot models, et cetera. Like, we will not have custom prompts for them. So they will fall back to some default prompt that we have uh, kind of decided that works well for generic uh, use cases. That makes a lot of sense. Go. So today the team has been adding them. So like I noticed that in the latest rev, there's like open AI compatible models, like obviously a few other ones were recently added in there. Every time I open that, it seems like there's a drop down there. But you said that the there's an API. I mean, like actually VS Code itself is like a series of APIs that developers tap into for extensions. And I think not a lot of people need that know that maybe of how the thing works. And we were talking about the iteration planning recently on a podcast and Pierce was talking about things and we were talking about, oh, there's all these APIs that are being built in. So you all on the team have to add one. So if Moonshot comes out or whatever, you have to manually add one today. And from my understanding, that is changing. Yeah. So Bring Your Own Key first started not with an API. It started as just a custom experience built into the Copilot Chat extension. The downside is exactly what you're saying. It started to get out from under us with the the space of a, the AI space is just moving so incredibly fast that it's kind of impossible for, you know, one engineer to keep up with all that. So what we decided to do is kind of pivot. And we've now developed a full extensible serv uh, surface for people to contribute to this. And now we've started reaching out to some of the more popular, you know, LM providers. And we're going to start working on helping them get extensions into the marketplace so then when you download VS Code and download Copilot Chat, if you wanted to, say, get a different uh, provider's models, you could go to the marketplace and install their extension as well. And then they would just automatically appear in the list and be treated uh, properly like that as well. The benefit to this as well, uh, the benefit to this is that some providers are not OpenAI compatible. Uh, 
for example, Anthropic's a good one. It uses their custom API surface and therefore maintaining, you know, six different API shapes, et cetera, is really difficult. So we end up collapsing to a common open AI shape, which loses some of the capabilities of of these model providers like custom mm-hmm. features. Yeah. So if I'm James, James AI, and I come along and I'm like, you know, what? I have the best new model in the entire world. And I want people to use this. And it's not open AI compatible. It's my own custom James surface, right? Inside of that. What's the process look like now for me, James developer, James LLC AI, <laughs> that I want to come in and do this. You said like I've, I create an extension. There's there's APIs on top of it. Am I writing it in TypeScript? Like what's the what's the jam? Yeah, step one is to offer your model for free because that's the best way to get people to use it. Uh, so, you know, you might lose a lot of money, but it seems to make things very popular. People like free. Uh, but yeah, we have extension samples in our uh, VS Code extension sample repository. And we also have a a doc that will drop soon on our website for people to read about uh, how to implement these providers. But it's pretty simple. It's just you have to provide a list of your models and some metadata about them, like, you know, how many tokens can it take in? Uh, how many tokens can it take out? Does it support processing images and tools? And that helps us show the models in the right context. For example, if you don't support tool calling, we can't show you in our agent mode because that is a tool-driven flow. Uh, so th- then you just go and quickly implement the extension. A lot of them will be pretty similar, I would say. And then boom, you're off to the races. I was going to ask that because, yeah, when I go in and I like, for example, if I configure you know GPT-5 mini, it's going to support some inputs and not other inputs, right? Or like James, my James AI LLM model may not support images or something like that. Like you said, tool calling. So from a user's perspective, I'm now you, Logan, you install my extension. Does that, what's that experience look like from a, from a user's perspective? Do I need to know a lot about the model or like, am I just slapping an API key and I'm good? Or how's, how's the user experience go? Yeah, it really depends on the extension. I mean, we try to leave things as customizable as possible for our, we have a provider built in right now uh, called OpenAI Compatible. And that one, you have to know everything about the model because we don't know anything. So we're going to ask you, you know, for its token limits, for its vision capabilities. But if I download James AI, in theory, James should know everything about the model and I should just be throwing in an API huh. key and boom, my model is configured properly, ready to talk to and very simple to use. I, I like that. That makes a lot of sense. Now, there are all of these existing ones in here. Are these existing ones using the new API or like were they using an API that got exposed? Like, you know, like because there's a bunch in there and you said it's, you know, it's impossible to maintain all of these and things like that. But like, are we using the our own APIs basically? Yeah, I mean, as I'm sure speaking to every developer you'll see is we're all very pro dog fooding. So we are dog fooding our own stuff here. So we're using the API, testing it. We fixed many bugs and and had some pain points. So hopefully it's easy for you now. Um, and everything goes to the same flow and nothing is treated specially. Every extension should get the same access uh, to be able to belong in the uh, VS Code AI ecosystem. When, when you're working with developers and speaking with different customers and, and different use cases, you talked about a lot of different use cases for it. Like in the real world, like how are we seeing like usage and adoption of built-in models, these custom models, these extensions, like, you know, are there different use cases people are using them for? Like, you know, you, you obviously are like in it, right? So you're hearing back from people that are using it. If you break something, they'll probably let you know, right? Like how is the feedback since this feature kind of rolled out a while ago kind of been for you and the team? Yeah, it's been really great. I mean, we've, it's been a very passionate feature. I think it definitely invites the tinkerer at the moment. I think it's still a bit new. So enterprises have not really started picking it up as much yet. Uh, but I have seen some playing around with it. And it's also taught me that uh, these model providers are super finicky and everyone treats the parameters just slightly different and supporting all of them has been uh, quite challenging. But I see people super excited, you know, the second a new model drops, you know, they have it running in Kabai chat and they're like, oh my gosh, look at these, you know, 10 things as part of their, you know, thread engagement farming they're doing. They'll show you all the the fun different things they're doing with the AI models. Wow, that's really cool. Anything else you want to talk about the new API or the new models or anything like that? Or do we kind of cover it all? Yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much covers it all. I definitely would tell everyone to go out and, and try implementing their own extension uh, and see what's what it's like. It's really exciting. And if you have any feedback, of course, uh, let us know and I'm happy to hear it. 
And if you have an existing extension that's doing something, some other integration of the terminal or something like that is an, like an AI extension, I'm imagining you want to create another extension. You could just build into your extension the support for this, or would it be its own standalone extension? Yeah, there's no reason that you have to build your own your, a completely new extension. So, for example, if the Azure extension, you know, wanted to start contributing Azure language models, they could just add it so that you download Azure and you get all Azure stuff. It's just yet another API surface you can talk to. Very cool. This is awesome. I'm really excited to see how it evolves and to see that list fill up with fun and funky stuff. Uh, because like you said, there's so many models. And when I talk to different uh, developers and friends, they're always like, oh yeah, I tried out this thing. It was really good for this specific thing, right? I think that that's the type of thing that in, intrigues me is like when I'm doing different data processor and different things, like hey, this model is really good at this thing and it's really fast at this specific thing besides like a more general model. So yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm excited to see it fill up and we'll put in the show notes links to all the issues and the development in real time. You can follow the team, build the thing in real time. I think that was the most fun, I think is like getting on the call and updates and seeing those checkbox updates as well that are there. So, well, Logan, thank you so much for coming on and talking through not only what bring your own key and models are, but like actually how it's evolved to be even more open uh, so everyone can kind of grow this out. Yeah, it's very exciting. And and as you say, as that list will fill up, uh, we will have something uh, fun in store called auto mode in hopes to make the selecting of the models even easier because there's a benefit and a downside to model choice, which is, you know, this idea of choice fatigue. So if you don't like to choose a model, uh, keep an eye out for that as well. It, it should be coming soon. Very cool. We'll deep dive on that in upcoming VS Code Insiders podcast. Logan just did the perfect little cliffhanger there. I really appreciate it, uh, Logan. You, have to, uh, you set it up for me. Perfect. So make sure you subscribe on your favorite podcast application, Spotify, YouTube. If you want the video version of this, we'll put in little images and little screenshots and little videos and stuff like that in there. But we make these to be audio first. So subscribe on your favorite podcast application. But that's going to do it for this VS Code Insiders podcast. Until next time, I'm James. Thanks for watching and listening and happy coding.